Somali Canadians will be watching today when a judge decides the fate of two men accused of murdering Mohammed Ali Ibrahim. The 24-year-old Somali Canadian was shot outside a casino on an Alberta First Nations reserve in August 2008. He had moved to Alberta from Toronto. Several members of Mohammed's family and friends, including our next guest, have been following the trial very closely. Ahmed Hussein is the president of the Canadian Somali Congress. He spent three months in Alberta this past winter. Trying to discover why so many Somali have been so many Somalis have been murdered there in that region. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Karen. Mohammed was one of many young Somalis who went west from the GTA. We've heard their stories. We've talked about it quite a few times on CBC. Can you tell us, though, remind us how they ended up in Alberta? Uh, they ended up in Alberta uh, quite like other Canadians who. Uh, uh, went to Alberta dur- during the uh, economic boom uh, in Alberta. So they went there to basically uh, take advantage of the boom and make some money and, and get some opportunity for themselves. So how typical was Mohammed's story as a young man wanting to go and make money? How typical was he? It was very typical. A lot of them, uh, we, we know of a few who went there to um, save some money for uh, university tuition. Others went to uh, save some money to help their parents uh, uh, with the, with their financial uh, situation. Uh, yet others uh, went there for uh, bad deeds by uh, getting into into the drug trade and, and things like that. Uh, in the case of Mohammed, he had gone there to save some money to assist his sister with her studies. He was also about to get married, and uh, his wedding was coming up, so he was saving some money to pay for his wedding and his new life with his fiance. Um, and and that's when he got killed in uh, Alberta. You mentioned the sort of a, a, the element of the drug trade there, getting involved at a low level. That story, it's hard to nail that that part of the story down, and who was involved, and how much or a big how big of a picture this is in the story. What do you hear, and what have you been told about the drugs being involved in this story? Well, uh, d- uh, the the uh, the drug trade is certainly a factor in some of the killings. In the case of Mohammed uh, Ali Ibrahim and others, uh, it's not been a factor. Mohammed, Mohammed's case was simply a case of uh, two individuals allegedly shooting Mohammed just outside the the casino that you mentioned. Um, he uh, it, it wasn't a premeditated murder in the sense that it's something that happened the same night. Uh, there was an argument inside the uh, the bar of the casino, and then when everyone went outside. Uh, Mohammed was shot by two individuals allegedly, and uh, I went to the preliminary trial. Uh, the, sorry, the preliminary hearing, and uh, the case almost n- never even made it out of the preliminary, preliminary hearing because it was so difficult to get uh, witnesses to uh, to to testify because these cases tend to uh, have uh, witnesses feel intimidated or afraid to to talk about what they witnessed. However, uh, the RCMP was uh, put in a lot of effort to make sure that the witnesses were available and uh, uh, eventually they were able to get enough evidence to proceed to trial. And today we find ourselves on the verge of the verdict, which is being uh, closely watched because this is the first trial among a string of murders. And Mm -hmm. so uh, this trial, in, in our opinion, will set the pace for the other, hopefully, other trials that will come up. So you talked about the culture of silence around those maybe who witnessed. What about the other culture, the idea of, of getting to the root of, of the community? And I know you've been working with the RCMP and community in Alberta, but also here in Toronto with the Somali community to try to get a sense of, of what's going on here, why they're leaving Toronto, why there's trouble once they arrive in Alberta. What, do you, what are you hearing? Uh, to be honest, uh, if you look at the individuals who have left uh, Toronto and Ottawa to go to Alberta and, and seek opportunity, the vast majority of them have succeeded. They have gone there, they have uh, had a, a better uh, chance of success, uh, they have really taken advantage of the economic boom in Alberta. That's very typical of other Canadians who have done exactly the same thing. So there's nothing peculiar to their migration, their economic migration. However. There have been a few who have uh, really uh, gotten into a high-risk lifestyle and who have uh, paid for that uh, choice with their lives. 
In the case of Muhammad Ali Ibrahim, uh, he had nothing to do with uh, gangs or drugs. He went there to seek opportunity and he uh, was shot because he was uh, protecting a female friend of his inside the casino. And when he went outside, the people he was protecting the young lady from uh, allegedly shot him outside the club. But you mentioned yeah, that. The, but you mentioned, if I can interrupt, about that migration sure. pattern, yeah. because you yeah. said that they are not unlike others who are going to find money. But there's a disproportionate amount of Somali Canadians leaving Toronto and yeah. going there. And the, the thinking and some of the conversation has been around: Why aren't they finding jobs here in Toronto? Are they not feeling support? Is there something in the Somali community that's being done? There's a lot of conversation around mentors and and talking yeah. to young men about about staying here and having lives in this city? Well, that's correct. Uh, I think part of uh, the challenge facing our community is that we don't have enough. We have a deficit of professionals in our community that can bring along a lot of the young people in our community into jobs and professions that they desire. And uh, part of also the other problem is if you really want serious social mobility in Canada, one of the easiest ways to do that is to get a post-secondary education. Now, a post-secondary education, especially to professional schools, is extremely expensive in this country. And uh, when I spoke to some of these young people, they go to Alberta strictly to save money to pay for that uh, post-secondary education so that they can be socially mobile. They don't have uh, a community or uh, an extended family network that can pay for their uh, education. And so this is not the kind of well-heeled community that has been able to establish scholarships and grants uh, for their young people to move ahead. I think that's something that will come in the following generations. Part of the bigger picture, yes. That's right. Ahmed, thank you very much for joining us this morning. You're most welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Ahmed Hussain is the president of the Canadian Somali Congress. Later today, a judge is expected to rule in the murder trial of Mohamed Ali Ibrahim. The former Toronto resident was shot outside Edmonton in August 2008. Two men are charged with second-degree murder.